Hey everyone, welcome back to another ICM 2.0 Python version video. In this video, we are going to finish up our discussion of conditional statements by talking about logical operators and and or. If you have not already watched the previous two videos on conditionals, I recommend going back to do that and then meet me here. Just like in the last few videos, we do have some specific starter code that we're going to be working with. You can see that I've already made a copy and it lives on my screen. I will make sure that the link is in the video description. If you don't have it open, please feel free to pause, make your copy, get your screen set up side by side so that you can code and watch at the same time. And remember, you can always pause and rewind as needed. Now, I said in this lesson, we are talking about logical operators. Within our code, those are primarily and and or. We can also, just like with um, like our comparative operators, we can add in the not statement. Uh, but for now, we're just sticking with and and or. Um, and we it's important that we, in our minds, know the difference between using and and or. When I think of something as an or statement, any of the conditionals included in the or need one, at least one of the conditionals in my or statement need to be true in order to proceed. So as an example, if I said, I am going to the movies if it is rainy out or it's Saturday, that gives me two possible chances to go to the movies. It's guaranteed when it hits Saturday, I'm gonna go see a movie, but if it's a Wednesday and it's rainy, that still counts because it's not an and, it's an or. If I were to say, I go see the movies if it's rainy and it's a Saturday, I am only going to the movie theater on rainy Saturdays. If it's Saturday and sunny, not going because I am looking for both conditionals to be true. Now, in this example that we're going to code together, we are specifically going to be using an and statement, um, but just know that or is in your back pocket and it might come up in future programs. Now, this project looks a little funky and I want to explain some things and kind of the vision of how this is going to work first. So in this program, we're going to be using conditional statements to change the entire background of this canvas based on what quadrant my mouse is in. These lines are primarily here as guidelines so that we can understand how the canvas is separated into four distinct quadrants. Um, they are not rectangles, they are just lines. And so to be clear, there is no fill for each one of these spaces, each one of these quadrants. It is, that's just the background. And because of that, the entire background is going to change when we are in any given one. If you or your students wanted to get creative and you wanted to try and program rectangles in that would appear when you're in that quadrant so that it gives that appearance of um, just one quadrant changing, you are welcome to do that. You're even welcome to add that on as an extension where maybe you get like a vivid rectangle and like a less vivid background. You're welcome to figure that out on your own. Um, we are just focusing right now and like the basic version of this is getting the background color to change. So what I wanna have happen is I'm getting a different background color when I'm in every single quadrant. We're gonna code just the first one together and I'm gonna call this quadrant one. So this is the first one I'm looking at kind of like we're working on a Cartesian plane. This is my quadrant one. Um, and because I want my whole background to change color, I know that I'm gonna need a variable for this. So I'm gonna have BG color. I'm gonna have it start um, just at the gray it is now, I think. Make sure that's the color. Um, I'm going to plug it in here. And I also, just like before, I'm going to make a note that says global variables. I need to tell the computer that I'm using BG color in here, even though it is a global variable. If in my conditional, I suddenly write BG color equals, I run the risk that the computer is going to think I am suddenly making a local to draw variable called BG color, as opposed to using the global variable BG color that we named at the beginning. So that is the purpose of line 10. Now, I also want to just um, make a little note that my conditionals are going to be here. You can see our instructions. I'm going to make a note that the first conditional I'm changing is the top right corner, turn, background, um, magenta. I always go for magenta because it's just such an easy one to find. Now, in order to do this, I need to know what values constitute this type, this top right corner. So I think what I'm going to need to know is I need to know when left to right am I in this top corner and when up and down am I in this top corner. So if I move my mouse across the screen in 
this quadrant. Uh, just my X values, it's like 22, 89, 149, 103. It never goes past 200. And that makes sense because this line is dividing it in half. Anything over here, all of my X values are bigger than 200. So I'm gonna just make a note that mouse X needs to be bigger than 200. Um, and if we struggle with our less than or equal then, remember it's like an alligator mouth going towards the bigger of the two values. And then I'm gonna do the same for up and down. In this quadrant, looking at the Y values, I'm getting 42, 103, 154, 168. It goes all the way up to 200, but it never surpasses it. Once my Y values surpass 200, I am in the quadrant underneath it. So that tells me that my mouse Y values always need to be less than 200. And I am just making that note because it's going to be an important part of my conditional. Now I'm gonna start my conditional again, just as we always have. I'm gonna use the if word to start. I cannot start with an elif. And I am going to put in mouse X greater than 200 and mouse Y less than 200. In Python, our and and or are just the words. Whereas if you are more familiar with JavaScript, it uses the double parallel lines for or and the double ampersand for and. Here it's a little bit more um, English speaker friendly. So I have mouse X greater than 200. If mouse X is bigger than 200 and mouse Y is less than 200, I'm gonna have it print a statement for me that um, I'm in top right corner, just again, so I can test it. And then I'm gonna change the color of that background because I have something that is going to vary. I'm gonna use a variable to do that. I'm gonna make sure the background is now magenta. I'm gonna test, I'm gonna run this and see how it works. So I'm gonna hit stop and run. No errors, that's great. I didn't make any like little syntactical or typo mistakes. I'm gonna move my mouse onto the screen. If I'm in this quadrant, nothing happens. If I'm in this quadrant, nothing happens. If I'm in this quadrant, nothing happens. And then I go up top and it's instantly magenta. And it tells me again and again and again in the console, I'm in the top right corner. Now, right now, nothing happens when I move into the other boxes. And that's going to be your task as this video ends. You are going to continue adding on to what we have done here with elif statements for the three other boxes. And even though we discussed in the last video, it is a statistical impossibility, you're gonna make that final else statement that just a uh, void has opened in the space-time continuum. Our mouse is somehow in one of these quadrants that's not accounted for and turn the screen black. You will never see the black as long as you have coded this correctly. It is just our catch-all and also right now our practice for the structure and our catch for if our numbers are somehow wrong or off. Um, if we are using the less than and greater than and not equal to, I suppose that would actually be the middle. So it does not need to be a universal anomaly. It could just be that you're in the exact center. Feel free to pick the colors that you want. Um, have fun with it. Enjoy yourself. Make sure you practice because we are going to definitely be using these logical operators in future lessons. And I'll see you in later videos. Bye.